Today, we're gonna cross back into the good old USA after three months of being down here in Baja. And not surprisingly, I'm of mixed emotions about the moment. I am, no, that's a complete lie. I have no mixed emotions. I don't wanna go back. I mean, I am completely loving it down here in Baja, but life, life is not always our own to steer. We've been down here in Baja traveling all around this peninsula in our beloved school bus, the Huckleberry. And honestly, it has been an incredible three months. But today, all that ends. Hi there. Thank you. I have been back in the United States for less than a half an hour right now, and my shoulders could not be higher up. I could not be more stressed. But I'm in a Walmart because we have to regroup, and this is probably the most horrifying part of everything. I mean, I'm back in a place where you have to lock up dog leashes. You can't get to anything here because everyone's going to steal something. Everyone is rude. Everyone is... I don't want to be here. Okay, I know I need to calm myself down, maybe have a beverage or two, but like I just needed to go get beard oil. Well, there's a whole different section in Walmart where you can go in, you gotta pay for it there, they'll put it into a theft-proof bag for beard oil. I do need to wait until I've calmed down to share all of this with you. This stuff is impossible to get in Mexico. They just don't, hang on. They just don't carry it, nor do they carry soy milk. I'm actually surprised they didn't put this behind bulletproof glass, too. Here's something you haven't seen in a while. Yeah, I knew that was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> I am absolutely overwhelmed by American... All of this, all of this crappy, preservative-laden, frozen. I don't, I don't want any of this. I don't want any of this for anybody. This is not... Food. And of course, having said all of that, I'm getting our own frozen preservative laden American crap. Okay, I think I am finally starting to chill a little bit. I had such a great chill down in Baja and I seem to have lost it. Uh, this place here, by the way, is so packed with people, I've been struggling to find a place to record this because there's just too many human beings in one spot. Anyway, today's problems. We had to come through this Mexican border town called Mexicali, and it is very, very crowded, very, very busy. It's the only way really to get across the border with a rig our size. And I hate to say this, but Nikki and I don't communicate well when it comes to driving duties. We just don't speak the same language. So I'm trying to drive white knuckle, just trying to figure out where we're going. I'm asking for help with navigation and it, things aren't working. Stress levels are soaring through the roof just trying to get over the border. He's been trying to find the border. And as the minutes went on, my head was gone. As you saw a little earlier, it kind of stayed gone. I, I jokingly said it was gonna be culture shock, but I wasn't ready for this. So when last we left our Mexican hero, he was in a rather bad place. Perhaps you noticed. So to soothe himself, he went off to this fine dining restaurant called Pizza Hut, where not only did he not get a beer because apparently they don't serve them. I know, no beer at Pizza Hut? What the hell happened to America while I was gone? Anyway, to Pizza Hut, he did go, and to Pizza Hut, he did consume. Strangely, two hours later, he was actually hungry and had to eat the rest of the pizza, all of which just sort of left a bit of gastric distress all throughout the evening. And so now we enter day two of the Back to the U.S. adventure. Where shall we go? Our hero is now rested after a lovely night in a Walmart parking lot. <laughs> You're not going to believe where we're going today. 
Yep, we're crossing back into Mexico. We're about 40 minutes from where we left Mexico just a couple of days ago. Across this border is a town called Algodones, and it means cotton. I don't know why, but I'll explain why we're going to be in there in a second. There is a big difference, though. Uh, this time we're walking across. The onslaught begins. This is one of the many places that we come down to for medical and dental care. Now, I did a video on it, and I'm not going to bore you with the details of why. Go check it out if you're interested. But that's why we came back here. Uh, Rick, why didn't you just take care of all of this when you were in Baja? That is an excellent question back in the United States, Rick. Okay, here's the thing. You come to a border town and everything is centralized. Within five or ten square blocks, anything you could possibly want is here. If you go to a regular city like down in La Paz, it's all spread out. I can get more done in just a few hours than I can in a few days, so that's why we cross. Oh, and since we're heading away from the border after this, uh, it's the only opportunity we had. Yes, friends, that is the border wall. That shows you just how close affordable health care can be. The only real big downside to all of this is the hawkers. And I realize this is how they make their money, but they're friendly, they're nice, they're not over pressure, but they will definitely is that even open? I'm trying to find some breakfast. Hey, this is funny. It's a restaurant slash dental office. So in just a moment, we've got the top five weird things that we're having struggling time getting used to, like speaking English apparently is one of them. Anyway, before we do that, this truck to go by. Oh, no, it's not a truck, it's a helicopter. You see, when you sit here at the border, you gotta wait for the helicopters to go by because, oh, apparently it's a dangerous place here. You know, all the... Okay, he's far enough away so that you can actually hear me. In a minute, we are gonna go over the top five things that are just weirdly, unusually, we're having trouble adjusting to. But before we get to those, I have to answer the burning question that's on everybody's mind, what's next? And for that, we're gonna play a little game show. We're gonna kind of open up one of three doors. And to be completely honest, we don't know which of these doors we're going to open. So if you got a comment, thought, or anything like that, you know, go down, type it below. We'd actually love some input. Anyway, door number one is to continue the road trip in the bus. Except this time it would be up the California coast, Oregon, Washington, hook a right, and kind of bebop between the US and Canada and just see what we can see. The downside to this particular door is that I've pretty much been driving in that seat for the past year and I would actually kind of like a little bit of break from the driving for at least a month or two but this is the default option and it's the one that if we can't decide it's the one we're going to do door number two is Vietnam yes of all places a country halfway around the world it's a place we're dying to go see we want to spend like three months there kind of dying to go see it but there's a problem this problem is the rainy season it's actually pretty much starting now we could maybe eke a month out if we went up to the north part of the country but the rainy season is upon them i don't think that's going to make for well a good trip so we may have to put this off until after the rain stop but vietnam is going to happen it will happen sometime this year and door number three is going and hiking the camino in spain now if you don't know the camino is a pilgrimage People come from all over and they converge on this town, this city called Santiago, where there's a, a big cathedral and everybody lands there. Now we're talking about doing the French route, which huh, amazingly comes from France. And it takes about a month to walk from the starting point till you get to the cathedral. Now this is the least frugal of all of our options. It is something that is gonna happen. Nikki did a Camino, the Portuguese version, last year this year sometime semi-recently i want to do my own camino so one of those three doors is going to be opened here within a month you know we're gonna dilly dally futz around for a month and regroup our lives but what door should we open we don't know maybe you can help us decide okay the top five weird things 
about being in the United States after living in Mexico for so long. And by the way, this doesn't include some honorable mentions like rest areas. I just drove by a sign today that said, rest area on the right, a rest area? In Baja, you just pull over to the side of the road and pee in a sand dune. Anyway, the top five, if I can remember them in no particular order. Miles versus kilometers. Now, down in Mexico, everything is in kilometers and meters, and you would be amazed how quickly you get used to it, how intuitive it feels to come back and go, you are seven-tenths of a mile from whatever you're going. It doesn't feel like it makes sense. Grocery shopping. Now, we touched on this a little bit earlier, especially when we were wandering around Walmart and I was being all, well, you know how I was being. In a supermarket down in Mexico, a supermercado, you don't have as many choices and it's actually better. I mean, if you're in a market here, you have endless, endless aisles of canned corn and canned peas. You know, which brand do you want? You know, they can take an entire aisle just on canned corn and peas. Down there, you get one can, your peas, you get them. That frozen food aisle that I went down was one of four in that Walmart. Endless, endless selection of frozen, preservative-laden convenience food. They don't have convenience food in Mexico. Pumping fuel, gas, diesel. You gotta pump your own here in the States. You do not pump it in Baja, and it becomes, well, it becomes very quickly a nice thing to do. Now, it's not because I wanna be entitled to have someone pump my fuel for me. It's because you actually get to speak to somebody. It's the, the same reason when you're in a, a supermarket. You are talking to a person. They don't have self-checkout either. You actually have to interact with a human being, and it's nice to have a little conversation, even if it's just while they're ringing you up or pumping your fuel. Yeah. I kind of like, I really kind of like that down there. And the last really odd thing are lawyers. And I have to explain this one. When we went to Pizza Hut the other night, last night, whatever night it was, as we were walking out the door, we saw this sign. And I thought to myself, why? Why do we have so many signs everywhere? Door must be locked when the business is open. Who is that for? Is that so that I don't go, oh, maybe I shouldn't lock the door behind me? Who does that? The only reason to have signs like that, I think it's all about the lawyers. And by the way, once you notice it, there are signs everywhere. I think it's so they can go, oh, you can't sue us because we told you that you're not allowed to, to lock the door behind you when you come in during open business hours hours. We are constantly up here being onslaughted with signage and information. Amazing. And speaking of lawyers, you know, if we have a, a pothole in a sidewalk, you know, we've got an armed security guard, 73 yellow cones and a giant signs everywhere going, there's a big hole here. Don't step in it. And still somebody's going to step in it and sue. Down there, if you step in it and twist your ankle, well, you're an idiot. <laughs> you shouldn't have stepped in the damn hole. I mean, they do put up a cone or something periodically. In Mexico, they allow people the freedom to be as stupid as they want to be. And that is truly, truly refreshing. Now, Nikki and I have to go figure out which of the three doors we want to open. Again, I cannot wait to read your comments to find out what we should do, because I know what I want to do, but it's not the best option. I guess you'll just have to wait and see what happens. Anyway, be healthy, be happy. I thank you for watching this, and we will see you real soon.